Supper today. First day of the month. It's 11 o'clock. We're going to get started. <coughs> oh, excuse me, here. It's because my voice fogged up. <laughs> so, um, welcome all to Believers Together here at Homestead Village. And welcome, of course, those who are watching the live streaming right now or in the future where it's always still up on YouTube and on the believerstogether.org website. So, we welcome all of you who are watching live streaming and further down the road that are going to come and watch this message as we continue in the book of Ephesians. And first of all, uh, we welcome you in the name of the love of Jesus the Christ, the Lord, the Messiah, and how much he's done in our lives. And uh, it's such a blessing to remember all the little things that we have been provided for and provision in our lives. And every little blessing that um, even though the breath of the, our breath is in the Lord's hands. So. And that can be taken away. And so we have to just treasure every moment. And I think as I've been looking at myself and others around, and yesterday we can't do anything about, but today is another day, and that day will end eventually. So every day, every day, we're, we're getting closer to being for the Lord. I remember when people have birthdays, I always tell them, you know, it's, it's happy, blessed birthday, and it's a wonderful day. But I said, I tell them, remember, uh, it's not that you're a year older. But it's, it's a year less that you will be with the Lord. For those who are believers, right? It's a year less. You're getting closer. And so uh, for us believers, that's a great thing. For the non-believers, well, then they have the grave to look forward to. And that's not a really look forward to anything. Death. But death, we have no sting over death. There's no, uh, we had a victory in Jesus. There's no death. Uh, their death has no sting upon those who are trusted and called by the Lord Jesus. So... Welcome all. Good to see you. Pastor Bob Tarasiak here, or Tarasiak. And uh, just so as you know, we welcome you in the love of Christ. And we do have the handout, which is also on the website and at San Felipe Believers on the Facebook page. And today, of course, is Lord's Supper Day. So if you have your juice and cracker or unleavened bread, whatever you might have, you want to get that ready, we're going to have to celebrate in remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross following the message before the closing song, so you can get that ready. And remember, if you don't have your Bibles, you can go online, or you can use your app, a Bible app, to get the information, because today's scripture reading will be in Colossians 1, 3 through 14. And also, our text this morning, as we continue in part three of our, our sermon message, which is, did I put it in here? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, there it is, yes, the message, yeah. Ephesians series part three, I was covered on a phone, I got all these pages now, I printed up. But a prayer of thanksgiving to the sovereign God, Ephesians 1, 15 to 23, will be actually in a message text. So, and also in time and offerings, we have offering box here locally, for online, uh, you can use this address as well at the website, and on the handout here, or t uh, through uh, Zelle or PayPal, whatever you want to do. That uh, we thank you for that up offerings to help continue printing supplies, doing this and that we need to do. All right, uh, prayer request. If you have any prayer requests, there are prayer re cards back there. And we also have prayer requests online. You can send an email or, or you can get the information at the website at believerstogether.org. 
and we will gladly pray for you and also Bible studies here in the chapel locally, physically, every Tuesday, Thursday at 4 p.m. And Tuesday and Thursday also online, live, I lead those Bible studies which start at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and that's an online interactive Bible study. We have we, right now we're going through on Tuesdays, we're going through uh, Daniel and on Thursdays Revelation, so paralleling them together because they really they parallel each other. It's great to study one and kind of like two days later see the other. But however, this Tuesday I will not be functionally as I will be going to get some medical things done, tests. So uh, we will not be having the Tuesday at 1 p.m. But for 4 p.m. we will. So just so you know that, for those who are watching, I have to send a message out to all those who typically connect through email. We will let you know that we were not going to have any Bible study this Tuesday, but Thursday we will. We will continue that one. So, all right. Uh, and the prayer request, I mentioned that. Please send your prayer request. We do pray for those things. Um, and make sure you send them to me through my email or call me, and I will gladly pray for you. If you have any other needs, get a hold of me. I'm always help available for weddings, funerals, uh, counseling, whatever the need be. So uh, you can find information at the website at Believers Together. Dot o -R -G -N. All right, so we're going to get started. Uh, we're going to have uh, somebody, Kath, if you want to do the opening prayer and read the scripture in Colossians 1, 3 through 14. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for another day that we can worship and praise you for all your blessings that you give us and how well you take care of us. Thank you for showing us your love. That way we can be totally filled and overflow that fountain to everybody around us. Thank you for us just being your ambassadors and, and showing how wonderful you are. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And the scripture reading is in Colossians 1, starting in verse 3. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Jesus Christ, for Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing as it does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on behalf, on your behalf, and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased in prayer for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all the spiritual wisdom and understanding. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, and for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to our Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. Amen. So Apostle Paul writing Colossians as well as we are in Texas in Ephesians talking about the Thanksgiving prayer, and so we see the the similarities, similarities of one letter to another letter to a different church. And so that's what we're going to see today in our, in our message later. And again, like I said, we're going to have Lord's Supper today. So uh, those who are home have the great juice ready. So now we're going to start our worship songs. And of course, one of my favorites is the Victory in Jesus. And so I love these old classic hymns and the new ones. I love them all. Uh, but uh, we do have the victory in Christ. Uh, it's the only victory above death, above all sin nature, above all this world. And we look forward to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and especially the rapture, since we will meet him in the clouds and when he comes for us. And it's going to be a joyous day. 
Uh, for those left behind, well, it's going to be a little bit rougher. But uh, we're going to start our victory in Jesus and the key of G, so let's sing it with the Lord. Well, I heard an old, old story of a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save the rich like me. I heard about his glory of the precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory.
looking and reading God's holy word, the word of God, which is um, basically preparing us for the eternal realm and kingdom of God. So we're going to continue in the uh, Ephesians. We're going to be in chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Uh, Ephesians 1, 15, 23. And as on your handles, it says there, and also on the handles, which are online, and on San Felipe Believers, on the Facebook page, the title is A Prayer of Thanksgiving to the Sovereign God. And just as an introduction, you know, there was a famous uh, theologian called Thomas Aquinas or Aquinas, who said this, Bestow upon me, O Lord my God, understanding to know Thee, diligence to seek Thee, wisdom to find Thee, and a faithfulness that may finally embrace Thee. End quote. Well, this is a basically sort of a prayer by Thomas Aquinas. And today, Apostle Paul, just like we read in our scripture reading, his letter to Colossae, to the Colossians, was writing about a prayer for them, praying that they would be filled with more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And that others would also come upon that same revelation that we have as believers, that we together, we have the Holy Spirit that will teach us all things. We just got to ask Him. Sometimes, you know, we have not because we ask not. And so through the Word of God, this is our standard of truth for the church, for Christianity, not some denominational statement or some kind of worldly wisdom. We have to go to the Word of God. And so again, to understanding there, as Thomas Aquinas says, we need to be diligent to seek Him, to understand Him, and that is through the Holy Spirit. And also what? Prayer life. Well, let me ask you a question. What does a prayer life look like for you? What does prayer look like for those watching at home? How does prayer define you and your relationship with God in Christ? Is there a burden on your heart to pray to God and for others? And so that's kind of what, what some of the fundamentals of Christianity really is, is a communication with God. It's not ritualistic prayers like many certain denominations use or the Pharisees would use and, and at the time of Christ. He wants us to talk to the living God. And He wants us to listen to Him as well. So in our text today, and previously we've seen uh, in Ephesians 1 as we started this, that believers are blessed to be in the Lord's chosen We've seen two weeks ago, blessed are the gods so like believers who are chosen before time was even created. And then believers are blessed and united in the redemptive power of Christ, predetermined into an eternal inheritance. And then we've also looked at the point of God received all the glory regarding the eternal election of life. And that believers have an inheritance guarantee of salvation. And we've seen that last, last two weeks. And today, in part three, we're going to discover Apostle Paul how his prayer to to and for the saints in Ephesus, to the Ephesians, and the particulars of thanksgiving, of prayer to our sovereign God. There's particulars he talks about when in regarding prayer and what our relationship's about with him and how we can gain more knowledge, wisdom, and stuff. We're going to see this immeasurable great power of God and his sovereignty toward us. So let's read in Ephesians 1, chapter 15, verse 23. And this is God's holy word. For this reason... Because they have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and a revelation and the knowledge of Him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, Abba, Daddy, we thank you for the privilege of having this word, Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians, in front of our hands today. And Father, we thank you that through your Holy Spirit, a led spirit life 
that you would give us the understanding and wisdom and the knowledge of what you're trying to say, not only to the Ephesus Church, but to us today, the application and what it means to us and how we can grow with that wisdom, knowledge, and revelation and your sovereignty and your divine uh, dominion over us, Father. We thank you for the privilege of being called your church. And Father, use me to speak as an oracle of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray this all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. amen. So the first point is this, as we look into these, break down the theological aspect of what we're looking at today is, remember to be thankful in prayer. Well, sometimes I, I, Lord, oh Lord, help me, oh Lord, Lord would you, will you, but why don't we just sometimes be thankful for the things we have? And I think one of the things of that is to, to remember to be thankful in prayer. You know, how many of us are thankful for the blessings of God? How many of us say a prayer to God with thanksgiving in our hearts and our mindset? So here Apostle Paul is continuing in his letter to the Ephesians and he shifts his words to more of not only the preeminence of God, we talked about earlier in the election, he also predestined, called by God, drawn to him, and we have been guaranteed the, the, uh, the time to be redeemed. We are guaranteed to be part of his children of God. And of course now he's very thanksgiving in his prayer. Well, he continues this, and, and, and the question is, well, why does he do this? Well, because he heard of the Ephesians' faith in the Lord and Jesus and the love to other believing saints. This is a very powerful church. And they were going out there in the midst of persecution, in the midst of all the attacks that were on them at the time. In Revelation, they talk about the church where they were persecuted, uh, even by some of the Jewish religion and some of the Romanists and the pagan gods that were in that, as we call present-day Turkey, where Ephesus was. And so, again, they, they went through a lot of issues. But again, they, they need to remember whose God they serve and that they were children of God. Remember to be thankful in their prayer. And that's why he says there in this letter in verse 15, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love to all the saints. So, again, they heard about this. They had the report Apostle Paul received. And so, of course, he's so grateful because he's heard of their faith for the love of the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints that is believers like you and I. And he says, I do not cease. He doesn't stop to give thanks to them. Remember you in my prayers. Uh, Apostle Paul talks about other places where pray without ceasing. In other words, well, we're not going to be 24 hours a day saying prayers and, and not sleeping and whatever, but he's saying basically to continue when you have the moment when God speaks to you, when the Holy Spirit touches you and says, man, i got to pray for that person. I have to pray for them, you know, pray for somebody maybe going through a situation. And so we just remember to be praying for them, but also thanksgiving at the same time because in God's sovereignty, sometimes we don't know why God does something, sometimes why He doesn't do something. But we only trust and lean not our own understanding, but trust in God and what He's doing and His sovereignty. And so Paul is so thankful for this Ephesus church, for their faith and love toward others, that he remembers them in his prayers. And Paul was around different missionary journeys. He went through three missionary journeys and he, he was just planting churches all over the place. He was a very busy man. He was a, the, uh, the perfect example of, a, of an apostolic or called leader of the church to go and live an unselfish life. It was very blessing. So he was thankful for them. So he heard of their faith and love that they shared among themselves and he remembered them in his prayer time. I mean, what a powerful example of prayer and so for us today we also are to remember who we are that we've been what we've been justified by Christ one moment in your life you understood you God called you revealed faith come by hearing the word of God and God revealed to you your sinful nature the sinful state of who you are and you realize man I'm a sinner we realize that only through Christ's forgiveness that we have been can be accepted not by any works of ours, but by the grace, the favor of God. You called, you called upon the name of the Lord, and then you became God's elect. You were part of His chosen who drew you to Him. And so this was, whether it was through a prayer, whether it through was a, a, a word of Paul calling upon Him, it was a call, and we remember that in our prayer time, we are grateful and thankful that God has called me, called us together to be of the one body, one family, true family, Brothers and sisters, along with the Jewish, those who believe in Jewish people who have been, 
you know, proselytize and has come to Christ's knowledge and wisdom and, and saving Lord of God and that grace. And so the question is, is who are you remembering in your prayer time? What do your prayers look like? Do you even have a prayer time? Some people may not. How are you communicating with God then if you call ourselves Christians and believers? And I think that's a question all of us can answer for ourselves in the eyes of God who knows our hearts, who knows our minds, who knows all things. And again, uh, it is to remember, to be thankful in our prayer time. Point two is this. We are to pray for others to gain insight into the relationship with God. And that's in our points in our handouts. Pray for others to gain insight into the relationship with God. In other words, we have an insight. We're developing more and more that insight, relationship with the Lord. We also have to pray for them, as Apostle Paul was praying for the Ephesus Church, for those people to get more insight, more knowledgeable, no, more wisdom in their walk of faith because we are sojourners. We are the ambassadors of Christ and people to us. So we want to show the people like, you know, this is what my life is about. I want to pray for you. I want to be able to pray for those around us. They also that they be, uh, their eyes of, the eyes will be open, spiritual eyes, the blindness. Many people are blind walking around, even here where we live and around the world, that they rather deny God. They rather deny and, and even make, create their own God, if you will, idolatry, whatever it may be. And even themselves make themselves gods, like the Roman emperor of times of Christ, where they, he actually believed the emperor was a god, if you will. And so, um, so it's important that, again, when it comes to praying for others, that we also pray for them to be enlightened into that relationship with God. So how many of us understand the importance of prayer? Yes, it's part of Christian life. It's praying for others. Praying, remember, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so it's good for that. So Paul's prayer for the Ephesus church includes six aspects in verse 17 through 19. There are six aspects aspects of Verses 17 to 19. The first one is this. He's praying for them, for God to give a spirit of wisdom. That's the capital S. So that's the Holy Spirit. So he's praying for God to give the Ephesus church a spirit of wisdom. Uh, a wise man once said, remember the old expression, of, you know, Confucius say, you know, whatever. But when it comes to God's wisdom, we, you know, we, we pray for others to have a spirit of wisdom. You know, it's one thing to have knowledge, but it's another thing to use it wisely. A lot of people have book knowledge, they have many degrees, but when it comes to uh, tying the shoes, they can't do it. You know, so basic, sometimes common sense things. And so it's one thing to have great knowledge, but it's another thing to use it wisely. So he's possible, Paul's praying for the Ephesus church that they give for God to give them a spirit of wisdom. Secondly, of the five or six aspects in verse 7 is for God to give revelation knowledge of Him. What's more important than opening the Bible and getting to know Him? Because it's all been set up. It's the 66 books are divinely inspired, God breathed, and they're to rebuke, to, to train, to, to correct us, and it's to help us to gain knowledge of God. You can have Bible knowledge, but again, where does the wisdom come from? The wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit to help us. So, first was for God to give us the wisdom. Secondly, for God to give revelation knowledge of Him. Thirdly, it's for God to enlighten the heart. To enlighten the heart. We can have head knowledge. We can have all these things. We can have revelation knowledge of Him and spirit of wisdom. But what about the heart? It needs to be enlightened. We need a heart exchange. People are hard-hearted these days. They're very stubborn. They're very hard-hearted. That's why God and Ezekiel said, you know, and Jeremiah said, the heart is wicked. Who can know it? Uh, it's deceitful. So we can't follow our hearts. Like you say, oh, I, gotta, I, I follow, you know, something in my heart. Well, be careful with the heart. We have to go by knowledge and wisdom of God's word is more important. So to be enlightened, the heart is that third point for these aspects that Paul prayers about. The fourth aspect that Paul's praying for for the Ephesus church is to know the hope of the calling of God. Hope in the Bible is more of an assurance. It's a blessed hope. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And so it's important when we talk about the hope of the calling of God. He's called us to an eternal 
guarantee, a warranty to the time will be redeemed. We've seen that in Ephesians 1 earlier through 3 through 14 about God's grace and that He predetermined us. He predestined us. It's His will of God the elect. Before the beginning of time, He determined all these things, knowing that at a certain day or certain moments of your life, the time frame that you were called, you knew it beyond a doubt that, man, I know the Lord is calling me. I sense the conviction that I have to repent of my sin. And that's all the work of the Spirit. He's revealed who we are truly in this fleshly, natural state of mankind. And God helps us to understand, to, to enlighten us, to know the hope of the calling of God. That's the fourth aspect. The fifth aspect that Apostle Paul writes to the Ephesian church that he's praying about is to know the riches of God's glorious inheritance. We spoke about that last week that we have an inheritance that's, it's, laid up for us. It's there. It's a guarantee that we're going to have eternal life, the inheritance of eternal life. We are going to inherit that. And so God gave it to His Son, Jesus Christ, that we have a warranty, if you will. It's for there forever. And such to know that it never will expire. It's not like you buy a vehicle and it's got a six-year or 100,000 mile, three-year warranty. God's warranty is good forever. And guess what? It's free. You don't have to pay for that extended warranty. It's forever. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. And to know the riches of God's glorious inheritance. And then finally, the sixth aspect Apostle Paul talks about in verses 17 19 is to understand the immeasurable power of God's greatness for believers according to God's mightiness work. And basically, it's to understand the immeasurable power of God. That's what it's about. His sovereignty, His mighty power working to make this all happen. He drew you. The power of God that created, spoke, and, and, and He created life. He created the universe. He created all these things. You know, He, he breathed into Adam. He became a life, a, a, a being, a holy being, a ruach, and the Holy Spirit is in, 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 in the Hebrews, ruach. So He ruach, He breathed life, and He became a living soul, Adam did, and Eve, and, and we as living souls of people, we have to receive the breath of life, like Holy Spirit in the in, in the Greek is pneuma, it's this it's breath like, like pneumatic, you have the pneumatic like that, like hydraulic uses pneumatic power. It's the same kind of power that we get of God's greatness that we receive from God. So these are some of the prayers, six prayers that are aspects that Apostle Paul was writing to the church, the Ephesians, about that he was praying about for them. And it was a powerful prayer. And he wanted these believers to gain insight, wisdom, knowledge of God, and how to understand these riches of His grace, what? His favor, through Christ our Lord. What a, what a powerful prayer this is of thanksgiving that he talks about. And so, um, our Lord wants believers to communicate with Him in this prayer life, building up our faith in relationship with Him in our daily walk of life. I want to share what was written in Today in the World, uh, it's a periodical from November 5, 1991, regarding uh, uh, prayer and, and uh, understanding how things are kind of developed, our dreams and things. And Anyway, let me just share the with you. Said, this is from Today in the World, November 5, 1991. Quote, a major problem in the development of the first sewing machine was the location of the eye of the needle. Inventor Elias, right, Elias Howe, was rapidly running out of money and ideas when one night he had a particular dream, a peculiar dream. He was being led to his execution for failing to design a sewing machine for the king of a strange country. And he was surrounded by guards, all of whom carried spears that were pierced near the head. Realizing instantly that this was the solution to his problem, Howe woke up and rushed straight to his workshop, and by 9 o'clock that morning, the design of the first sewing machine was well on the way to completion, end quote. Interesting. Now, sometimes God gives us insight through a dream, through prayer, a vision, and, insert, you know, and of course, through prayer, inserting the scriptures, we can also have insight, and we can also share that insight to others, as Apostle Paul gave us the example of he prayed for the Ephesians church to gain those six aspects, to be able to have the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding in their hearts, to go forward and understand what this insight's about. Well, the question is, 
what does having insight to God mean to you? What does it mean to you? We can pray and be rest assured and allow God, we need, uh, we need to allow God to use us to enlighten others. And that's what we do because we have the light of the truth of God. We have the light, let the light shine. And now we are the salt and light of the earth. We go and reflect that light to others and to tell people that there is a God, there is Christ. And, and we pray that they also, in thanksgiving to the Lord, receive the knowledge and wisdom we have received through God's holy word. Well, what does mankind need to be able to provide the word of God to others to give insight? Well, that's our third point. Third point is this, is in your handout. Pray for God to provide wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of the inheritance of his elect through his what? Great power. That's what we're going to see about this last time in these last uh, verses of our text. Well, how many of us know that knowledge and wisdom is essential to a successful living in the world? Right now, many people, grandchildren, me and I, all my nephews and nieces and great nephews and nieces, they're all graduating from college with masters and doctorates and bachelor's degree or whatever, so that they what? They prepared themselves, they studied about a certain topic, a major, if you will, a minor, and now they hopefully they'll get out there with their business degree or technological degree, whatever it may be, engineering degree, and they're going to go out and face the world and try to get a job and try to apply that wisdom and knowledge. Well, again, when it comes to us as Christian, God is the source, think we're actually for everything, God is the source of all wisdom and knowledge for this world and beyond to the next, right? He's provided us with the brains, He's given us brains, He's given us eyes, ears to hear, eyes to see, hands to work, hands to study, our minds, he's, he's given all that to us. Sadly, people who are not of Christ don't want to and won't admit that because of being an atheist or whatever you want to call them, non-believers. But we as Christians understand the importance that God is the source of all wisdom and knowledge for this world and beyond. And so we need to pray for God to provide this wisdom, revelation, knowledge of this inheritance of His elect through His great power and not also to be help us to gain uh, uh, encouragement, to go forward in our lives, but also for those around us. That when we go through something, and people say, well, how can you be so peaceful? You've got this cancer, you've got this disease, or you got... I said, well, you know, I have the peace of the Lord. Really? How can you have peace? Because I know that even if I die tomorrow, I'll be with the Lord, and I'll have a, I'll have a perfect body. I don't have to worry about this pain, or, or cancer, or disease, or going blind, or my back ache, or my knee ache, or this hurt surge, all that You know, I'll just, just, just have the peace of the Holy Spirit. He gives us that, and He strengthens us. And that's what this communication, this prayer is about, because through His sovereignty and His great power, He is the source that helps us to get through those things. In Revelation, the apocalyptic uh, book of the Bible, talks about the overcoming, when we overcome how? Uh, by the testimony, by, by being in this relationship with our Lord God. And what a relationship it is, just like we want a relationship with our uh, spouses or children or grandchildren, great-grandchildren. We want to see them. We want to encourage them. And we, we want to be there with them. We miss them. And many, many probably had relatives that are probably not close by. Like my relatives are all in New York. I guess some in Poland and friends and other brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't see them. But once in a while, God instills in me in the Holy Spirit to, you know, Jesus, I'm saying, but I'm going to pray for them. Maybe there's a reason that that word came, that name came to my mind. So I said, well, I've got to say a quick prayer. Because I don't know what's going on, what may happen with them. Sometimes I follow up with a phone call. Uh, a best friend of mine, I grew up when we were small, Dave Viola, we, you know, I, I had something on my heart, and so I, I, I called him up and just to see how he's doing, he's doing okay. But, but you know, I, I, you witness to him, you talk to people, and, and sometimes, you know, you just listen to that still small voice of the Lord when he speaks to us, when we can be there for others, and encourage, and help, and, and be hospitable, and and putting aside some of our own selfishness, but also uh, to help others selflessless to be a favor of others and praying for them. So Paul continues to pray that he to provide them with a spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge of him, enlightened hearts, knowledge of the inheritance of believers, and fourthly, the knowledge of God's greatness and power of working to assist believers. And he's following verse, and I'll read it, 17 through 19. He's there as the prayer continues. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, what? May give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of Him. Having your eyes of your heart enlightened, 
that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable, see, you can't measure it, the greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to what? The working of his great might. See, all through the Ephesians 1, in chapter 1, it's all about him. He gives the word, he provides us, he predates, he does this. It's not about us, it's all about what he did for us, these wonderful blessings. And so we in return are thankful that we received all these great blessings, that we have this knowledge, this wisdom, and that we are to grow and continue in this knowledge and wisdom, and to be thankful. And Paul was praying for the Ephesians to truly continue to be sanctified, if you will, in the sanctification process, which follows justification, that is growing with the Lord, by this impact, the enlightenment of God's sovereign power, in which he does what? He provides great wisdom and knowledge of what? The truth. Your word is true. Sanctify them by your truth. John 17, 17. Jesus said that for us. So the word of God is the truth and it provides that sanctification process and power when it comes to do the will of God. Before we get to the Lord's Supper, I want to share what was in our daily bread. And it's, this was a little uh, illustration. Quote, And Ivan endures all the horror of a Soviet prison camp. One day he is praying with his eyes closed in his prison camp, but a fellow prisoner happened to notice him in his prison camp and says with ridicule, well, prayers won't help you get out of here any faster. And then Ivan opened his eyes and he answered, I do not pray to get out of prison, but to do the will of God, end quote. He might have in prison, but he said, you know, I'm praying, I'm gonna do the will of God. I'm, I'm, he was in that prison during that Soviet prison camp. And he said, you know, even if we're in prison, support to do the will of God. You know, I remember going to prisons myself and uh, many times doing prison ministry, wherever I seemed to go, it seemed to always kind of bring my guitar and I would go there and, and bring the gospel, bring some music and share my testimony. And I'll tell you what, you know, some of those prisoners I met who came to Christ while they were in prison, they were more freer in prison than those outside of the prison who were in prison in their own Sin, think about it. And so it was powerful to see these people full of joy, full of thankfulness, full of a prayer life, believing and just wanting to grow more and they were hungry and thirsting more for the truth. And just to see that administer these men who were in prison and ladies uh, that came to Christ, that God drew them. And sometimes God, well, we become put in prison because God wants to get our attention. Sometimes we, God allows us to go through certain things in our lives that sometimes are our own consequences of our own decisions, but God allows it so we can be enlightened and we can grow from the mistakes that we make. And God gives us that, willing to do that, and so He wants us to grow in that relationship with the Lord. Well, prayer can help our relationship with God, can it? To hear His voice and do His will. Every day as believers, we are to be thankful for the provision of powerful knowledge, wisdom, and to be able to pray for others to receive them same blessings from God. And that's what it's about. So let's pray now before we go to our Lord's Supper. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this word and message. You are a faithful God. You, you are so wonderful, knowing that, Father, that we in you are blessed. Holy Spirit, today, this week, as we read the Word of God, help us to gain more insight, more knowledge, and to apply that knowledge in our daily decisions through the wisdom you give us to act upon your Word. There is so much more to be done. The Word of God says the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. So Lord, send out the laborers. Use me, use us. Just to, just to kind of show love to others and, and invite them receive Christ and to know you know that there's something greater beyond this world and father we thank you Lord as we come out come to the Lord's Supper that father that you would guide us and help us to examine our hearts and father Lord I pray for those watching at home and from here even some in this building that father you would draw them to your truth of the Word of God that you would draw them because of their sin and, and have them understand that their sin is and they need to repent and they need to be forgiven. 
And it's only through your son, Jesus, Father God, that we want your Holy Spirit to touch these people, draw them, and, 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 and bring them to the truth of the gospel, the good news that there's something greater to live for beyond the grave. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for your son who, all, who went to the cross for us that we deserve. And Father, help us to understand and wisdom and touch our hearts. And Father, right now, let us uh, take a moment, Lord God, to repent of any sin that maybe we owe bitterness or anger that we have in our hearts so as to receive this Lord's Supper, to participate in this communion, Lord, that we would uh, uh, be purified and ready to receive that because it's only through your precious blood, Lord God, of your Son, Jesus, that enables us uh, to be part of your kingdom. And we do pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to suffer and uh, pass this out. Remember, there's two cups. The juice is on top of the glass, and below it is another cup. So there's two. Um, the bread is in this core cup below, so take both of those as we uh, will and wait till everyone sees it. Then we will start with the with the bread, the wafer, and we'll also with the juice after. And of course, we're going to read the scripture of Apostle Paul as typically when he wrote to the, uh, the society, the Ephesus Church, uh, the Corinthian Church, about how we do it to remember what Christ did on the cross. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, starting uh, verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he betrayed he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke and said, this is my body which is uh, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us not partake and remember what God did through his son Jesus on the cross with his body for the forgiveness of sin. Let us partake. We thank you, Lord, for the, your body that you nailed to the cross, that you voluntarily went and took our place. He physically, in his, in his carnality, went to that cross for us. So, Father, we thank you that we have metaphorically and spiritually have taken your body into our, into our bodies. And, Father, secondly, he took the cup and he, see, he uh, and started in verse 25, in the same way he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant, this is the new agreement in my blood, Jesus says. Do this often as you drink it and remember to me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us not partake and remember what the blood of Jesus spilled for us in the forgiveness of our sins. Let us partake. So much that we have the inner, we have the knowledge, and you drew us to the truth, and we can be thankful so much for what you did on the cross for us. But yet, Father, we know you are the living God, you are alive, and we're grateful that we can come to you, knowing that you are the one mediator, that you're alive, and you, you will see the right hand of God, and you are the our intercessor, that you hear our prayer because we have become alive because of your sacrifice and, and you paying the count in full for our sins. And so uh, thank you that we can now partake and remember what you did for us, not only today, but every day that we do this in remembrance of what you've done for us. And Father, uh, we can now rejoice and say that when we all get to heaven, it will be a glorious day, a day like never we could imagine. And we thank you for this time together. In Christ's name we pray, amen. <laughs> We open to heaven is our closing song. I won't skip out. I won't skip verse four and stuff like I did in the past. But we will sing all the verses. And so when we all get to heaven, it will surely be a glorious 
day rejoicing it will be when we all see Jesus and we'll sing and shout for victory. Let's sing the song.